between 35 and 40,000 homeless Iowans, between two and three million acres of crops damaged. Flood stage levels are being reached all up and down the Mississippi. If you compound all of the water that we had in the wintertime, plus the saturation of the earth, plus all of the rainfall that we currently have, it spells floods for all kinds of people. Went to bed. About two hours later, I was awoken and told I had to evacuate right now. When they woke me up, I stepped into probably about two and a half feet of water, sewage, everything. The water was coming up, I think, but it wasn't. I was, I'm 10 blocks from the river, and I didn't think it would stop, but my neighbor called and said we got evacuated, so we had to move, and they were moving out, and so I called Sarah right away, and she came and got me, and I've been here ever since. When she called, I didn't believe her that the water was going to come this high. I lived here in 93. It wasn't anywhere close to this. And Helen was in a hurry. She was very anxious, very nervous, and we got her and the dog out. I grabbed stuff out of the refrigerator, emptied things as much as I could, and it took us about 45 minutes to get home, which is a normally a 15-minute drive. We ran into a a lady, an elderly lady, that uh, the Wisconsin Dells Ducks had to rescue from her home. Um, also, we, we met a man who lost his entire home, plus uh, heard about a church that probably is going to have to be rebuilt, and got to take a look at some of our cities here where there's a lot of Wisconsin Synod churches and some of the devastation that the, the Rock River and the Crawfish River have caused in those communities. I think the night before the flood, uh, we got about 5.4 inches of rain on my little rain gauge uh, at the parsonage. And the next day, it was Katie bar the door. You know, the, 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 rain, the, the floods just came in, the dike started to breach on both sides of the river, and the people were scrambling then to get out of the way. Once the dikes broke and the water started spreading out, the coverage was, well, about 10 blocks to 12 blocks on either side of the river. Somebody guesstimated 1,600 blocks were underwater at one given time. It's going to take time, needless to say, for the water to go down. Last week, we were so happy it went down one inch. So it takes time for that to all flow away. The, the worst is yet to come, of course, to clean up the houses, get all of the mud out, and um, help people get back into their homes once again. Ask your neighbors, talk to people, not just your members, your fellow members, but other people. You may very well have an opportunity to help them, not just with this particular problem, but also share with them Jesus and how he carries us through even the darkest of days. The nursing home happens to be just in a, in a low spot and it was completely surrounded by water. They had about 85 residents, I believe they brought 72 to our church building. So from Tuesday to Sunday, we had a functioning nursing home in our building, and we loved it. The people were great, the residents were great, the people that we met that were on staff, the conversations that we were able to have, it was all great. And more importantly, I guess, it's just an opportunity for people to see Christ's love in action. Go for it. Help out those that are in need at the time, uh, if, it, if it be close to you or not, or someone else, go and help. If you're able to, time and physically, do it. Any time a disaster strikes and it's within the ability of the Wells Committee on Relief to get into the area as soon as possible, we like to help do assessments and help congregations to decide how they might use our help. That help can consist of anything from monetary help to assessing how they maybe could go about and even tackle and strategically work through a disaster. It might also include bringing in project managers and volunteers. Probably within the next week or so, we will have already passed $100,000 in contributions to local churches, many of them in cash gifts of at least $5,000 just to help in, in local needs, and some of them 
larger gifts in, in areas that have been harder hit. What really matters in life, we have. We have each other, we have our congregation. It's the biggest thing, we have our support of one another. These are worldly things, they can all be replaced if we need to replace them. And many of us have too much junk in our homes anyhow. God has been good to us. He has not let us lose any lives. He's not let us have any injuries. And a loss of life is much more than any worldly possession. But after all, if he does take us home, he'll take us home to heaven and we'll all be together then. When these kinds of things happen in people's lives, it certainly is, perks their ears and, and to, to the message that they should have maybe been hearing all along, but now they're maybe more willing to listen and, and maybe even ask a question. How do you find strength in this time of need? Well, I find strength in my Lord Jesus, and let me tell you more about that. Hopefully that, that story will repeat itself all up and down these rivers. Jesus' ministry was about people, and he came to save people. If people see a video like this and they see the days and the times are short, if they're reminded of Jesus' description of the last times, maybe it will make them more eager to, to share their faith with those around them and to understand how close eternity might be in our lives too. Beyond that, we, we surely hope that people will remember the, the physical needs of those around them through monetary gifts, through their local congregations, to the Committee on Relief, through opportunities to continue to volunteer their time, and as always, to pray for the needs and to the guidance of the Lord as we continue to walk our path to heaven.